Here. Stephanie. Here. Don. Here. Ed. Here. Mayor's excused. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. All right, before we do a consent agenda, 5A, she ain't going to be able to make it tonight, so we're going to take that off. Motion to approve consent agenda. <coughs> so Motion. moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, public input. This is time and place for discussion items not on the agenda. Doug? Um, trying to get my sign put up at Bo Dillon's. And uh, I need to mention that someone maybe said that I put the post up recently for the sign. And here's a. The post has been there forever. Yeah, it's been there forever. This is one of Todd's. You can see the sign, it's been there. For at least 10 years, I mean, probably been there for 30. Um, kind of said I need to get it resurveyed, and that would cost, I don't know, thousands of dollars, a couple thousand, or I don't know. And I think it's kind of ridiculous to spend that money when the sign's already there, been there forever. Just want to put a new, nice new, new sign on top of it. And it's the sign that I have is under the guidelines for. It's going to keep them more than 100 square feet. The mine's 84. Um, just trying to save some money, basically. I put, I put tens of thousands of dollars in that place and trying to, you know, save a buck, basically. So. What's going on, Penny? In the, when you apply for a, a sign permit, you have to do a diagram just like a building permit that shows where the sign is going to be and you have to locate your property um, pins or your property line and, and I just that's what I told Doug you would have to locate his property property line on that diagram and show us where the sign is going to be and the distance between the, the property line and where the sign is so that's what I t that's what I told him that's what's required for any building permit and nobody knows where those property lines are it's, it's my signs right in line with Casey's injunction, so it's all right in the same line that all the other signs are there. And it's pre existing, been there for probably I've been, been, I've been alive, probably. Is this something that we go to the county for? Um, it depends on when it's where a sign is because we don't know at this point if it's on his property or if it's in the DOT right away. So he would have to prove that it's not in the DOT <coughs> right away, also, or he would have to get permission for them to put the sign there. I spoke with Blake County and they said it's a local situation. Oh, we're, I think we're obligated, aren't we, to make sure that there's nothing in the DOTs. When right he away. signs the building permit, he's, <coughs> he's documenting where his property line is yeah. and signing off on that. So. It's, it's the property owner's responsibility to do that, not the city. And it's also, we, we need that information too because we're at, we don't know at this point where his property ends and starts, so we don't really even know if he has the proper amount of parking spaces on the, at, the, at the business right now. So it's, it, it's needed for many reasons. The GIS scale from the Lynn County shows it basically right where the, the line is on the, where the sign's at. If you look up online, and it's 30 feet from the highway, just the same as Casey's, and there's the same as Junction. And the sign's been there for years, so I don't understand why I shouldn't spend thousands of dollars extra for. I mean, the sign's already there. You're not going to move the sign. So, if the pool's already there, would he be grandfathered in or no? No, because the sign was removed. Well, not all of the sign was removed. The Part of the sign was removed, and just the poles remain. I. Uh, it, it seems goofy to, to require it for all those other reasons. I mean, to, to require it for the sign, maybe for the other reasons, it's important. But uh, he's not changing anything that's attached to the ground. Um, and I don't know if we can legally override our. I don't. Code or really, not, but I don't think the seems can, ridiculous to me. Yeah, I don't know how. To, I, I never, I guess, had this happen. But I mean, to me, 
I agree. He's not changing the placement of the pole. It's been there, and it was obviously approved at some point for our guidelines. If our guidelines changed after it was approved the first time, then I would assume, based on past experience, that he would be grandfathered in since it was a permanent fixture at the time that it was approved. However, if you're saying that you need it for parking spots and those kind of legalities, I think that's a different issue. Well, I have plenty of parking for the square footage that I have. And also, Todd will sign off what Connie said that whenever they close, about the time I open. So people can park next door. And I have permission from Todd for that. Yeah, and we, we've talked about these things and talked about these things, but we haven't, you, you don't bring me stuff in writing like you. I mean, he tells me that Todd will do this, but then I told him I needed some document from Todd saying that this part, so we can have that in the file, and I still haven't got that all done. Well, I haven't got it all graded yet, and, I mean, and I'm pretty sure I have almost have enough spots already, regardless of having overflow for parking, regardless of that, so. But all these stuff we're discussing was supposed to have been done before he even opened. So it's been a lot of behind the, So can we set a time frame for him to have all that stuff to you? I mean, what do you, I guess, what do you guys So think? what, um, like, I don't know if we can override, you know, our code. Our code. Yeah, I mean, does it go to the Board of Adjustments? I mean, all this is going to change once the, the bypass goes in and mm -hmm. the DOT is not yeah, involved. Yeah, it's but, not. But I can't go just by, Doug told me the DOT, the county said it's okay. I can't go by that or otherwise No, you, you would need so something So he has not brought me documentation Document. from the GOT, from Lynn County, or from anything saying that, yes, this is where my property line's on, the sign is on my property, I'm okay. I have no problem with the sign. It's just like I'm following the rules that I'm supposed to follow. Yeah. So Which is your job to protect the city. Is, so right now, and, I don't know where his the, property line us is. sitting up here, too, we got to follow those rules, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just yeah. whether it's a sign or... A parking ticket. I mean, we got to follow the rules too. I mean, I guess so that what, what I would ask is, you know, you, you said you talked to county. Just ask him to either. It says local situation. Ask him to email county and say it's a local situation. Doug's talk to us. You know. But that's the same. But word. you said that they said something about you were on your line or whatever. That the sign was behind your no, line. Who said GIS, that? When you look at your taxes, you can show a map of the GIS, and that's pretty accurate. For as far as your property lines within five foot feet, I believe. It's pretty high level altitude, but yeah, you know, I know, but it's, but yeah. It's, it's exactly. pretty much right there in my property line. And like I said, the same in line with Junction and Casey's. So I just don't want to spend a bunch of money for, I mean, you, the, the tall one poles are basically right there close to property line as well. Uh, if, if you try locating the pins using a metal no, detector, detector measuring? No, I have not. Uh, I mean, that I would be a real simple there. way rather than surveying. I will tell you that Doug has gone out and located pins for like six different people in town in the last two months with his metal detector. And it is pretty easy if you can find them that way. He hasn't always been able to find all of them, but by reason, yeah. you know, if you can find a couple, then you can probably figure out where the other ones are. Or sure. if you can find so, a neighbor's, so you can measure mm -hmm. down from that yeah. too. But I mean, so that what, triangulated. just like when Tom Mike gets ready to do his addition, are we going to say, oh no, you don't have to show us where your property line's on, we don't care. So, yeah. I mean, you're going to put me in the same position there, so. Well, I want an opinion from our city attorney. Uh, if we're doing it properly, because if we do it improperly, you're still on the hook for. But the sign has been there for years, and she'd like to say crap out <coughs> like a bunch of the stuff that's been in the bar. Yeah. Well, I, I do I think that we need to look at that because yeah. it was existing bar already. So I think you ramp out on a few things like the bathrooms. You know, to make it all ADA compliant because it's has not changed since it's been a bar the whole time, mm -hmm. and that sign has been there. They just the top off it. Well, the new, new top on the bar or on the, on the, on the posts that have been there for, for 40 years. I was trying to think because I can't remember. We went through the same thing. And I have no idea when that sign was even put up. I'm pretty sure Doug had it. He just put it on, on the building. I mean downtown. Uh oh. Um, well, we can't take any action tonight yeah. anyway because yeah. that was so we can get let's direction let's though right yeah. like you contact yeah, the attorney sure and you get your paperwork and bring yeah. it to county asap yeah. we want it from that you talk to the county 
and that let, just get a letter from Doug saying Doug's going to have permission to park in my lot once we close overnight or whatever. And if you can print off that thing that you saw online that shows Actually, the, the board. You, you. You yeah, it's, it's just the Lynn County yeah, website. It's public yeah. domain. Yeah. 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 Those yeah. lines are just an estimate. They're not an exact measurement, so right. you can't go by them legally, but they give you a, a close guideline. And maybe try to find your pins, because that would be a really yeah. cheap, easy way to solve all yeah, of awesome. that. I don't have to know what to so. Okay. He's going to be great. Yeah, he's got a couple. All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks for your consideration. Yeah. Anybody else Republic input? Yeah. Wayne Novak, the manager of Novak Estate. Um, dealing with two eyesores. Uh, one of them is the cities. Uh, last year, they tore out all the shrubbery, everything around Novak Estate sign as we were driving in. And nothing has been done to put it back. The one on Highway 30? We just yeah. we started on Yeah, Nova Wayne, I just ordered the stuff today. No. Yeah, yeah, I just got stuff ordered today. It's ironic. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's very funny you said that because I went to Ghani. We just got, we got way behind with us, some of our other street projects we had. So, no, we are moving forward. Yes, now. yeah. Yep. Good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Anything else? Anybody? My name is Vicki Bennett. You're on. You're, down on, you're on. You're on. You're on. Oh, somewhere else. Yep. You're, you're, you're on. You're coming. You're coming up, Vicki. <laughs> okay. These are for not on the agenda. Anybody else? All right. For a request from, I'm sorry if I mispronounce this, Ahmad. Ahmad. Hey, Yusuf. Yes. All right. To speak to the council regarding being charged late fee. Good afternoon, my name is Dr. Renard Yusuf from Living uh, Street on 2nd uh, Jackson Street. Uh, actually, we have two issues with this. Okay. One of them, the, uh, uh, the late payment for the local utilities. And I don't know how they set $15 of the uh, payment. This is the transition. The second one, they say that they should be there at 9 o'clock in the morning and stay for the end of the day. Uh, closing business day. I don't know. Uh, because I'm running for the state senate and I'm busy with my campaign and I didn't get the chance to come over there. I came by two o'clock and then I found them they charged me 15 dollars. This is the first part. The second part, uh, as I mentioned, with my campaign I done I'm not sitting over here all the time. And uh, I found them they came and hired somebody to know my class. And, uh, and they charged me five hundred dollars. And when I checked with the other people, I found the rate is one hundred between one hundred fifty and two hundred dollars. I don't know why they have just one person. They dealing just with one person, emirate, and they charge a lot of money. I don't know why. This is for my question. When I go to the city to swap with them, so the answer always give you they just check check. Chatter marks. They they don't they are not all into initiate or they are like the settings. I don't know you say something that make them just nervous and I, I don't know. So you're you so you're saying you came in and paid your bill on the twentieth at two o'clock and we charge you fifteen dollars late fee? Yes. It was not the twentieth. It was we we actually got an extra day that month and he came in the following day after that. And so the 20th yes. fell on a weekend or something, so you had till the 21st, and then he came and in the 22nd? And then he came in the following day, yep. Well, I don't have a lot of sympathy on the late fee because I've paid it many, many times because I, too, don't always get in here on time, and I always have to pay the $15 late fee. So that is what it is, and it's set by our ordinance. And yeah, but he's... I no, no, my question is, why does uh, let the people come over here to pay... Uh, up to the ending of the business day. Why are they just set it for nine o'clock in the morning? You were your bill was due the day before. I, I know, I know, I know. You so we what we do is we have a if it's due on the twentieth and you drop it off that night, if we come in the next morning, all the people that had dropped theirs off over overnight or who come in first thing in that morning before Christina processes them at nine o'clock, we still charge them the late fee. So you get an extra whole evening and a couple hours in the morning. 
So we cut, she processes them all by nine o'clock and it's done and over with. And that's the computer accesses, I mean when she pushes the button it processes the thing. So you are not, you did not pay your bill on the, the due date, you paid it two days later. Okay, explain to me how you guys set it for $15. I live in many counties over here. Every county they didn't charge more than $6.5. Why do you guys charge $15? That was set by I council don't care many about years $15. ago. No, I'm not speaking about myself. I'm speaking about everybody living in this one. You guys elected to make people life easy over here. But you guys make it very complicated. It you was set by council. It was that late account. that late fee has been set for years as long as I've I've been around yeah so right. I mean it's, it's not 20 plus years yeah. that I've lived here well, that's it used what the to be ten dollars and yeah. it went up to 15 I don't know how many years ago because I wasn't on the council when it went up yeah. to 15 but I mean here's the thing you have to have some kind of a rule because if you don't have any rule then people just pay anytime that they feel like it whenever they want to at any point in the month so you have to have something to hold people accountable to get that bill paid on time because if the bill's not paid on time a lot of things happen we have to send somebody out to put door hangers up and that costs the city money we have to send reminder notices and that costs the city money so it, it, there's things that have you know there's there's a process there so you have to do something and i understand if you think it might be a little bit too high but it's been set literally for years that we've had a late fee and it did change in the past 10 years probably where it did go from 10 to 15 but we have had a late fee ever since I can remember yeah. and I did try to explain to him that it's, it's not because he kept saying you can only you can't just give people one day but I explained to him the bills go out on the 30th of the month so you have 21 days to pay your bill so he should have had a bit should have been able to find time in that 21 days to come pay his bill. I also explained to him that we have automatic payment. He can drop, he can call and put it on a credit card. He can go online and put it on a credit card. So there's many different ways to do that. Well, so the, on, the, on the last conversation, yes, you explained that, and then we're going to say mm -hmm. the automatic payment. But we, I'm not. We didn't know how the online payment. We don't know. Like, do they have a website or? Mm -hmm. the city yeah, city codes, thing. city codes, public credit public credit record. Online, mm -hmm. we even have a sign on the door that says with the credit cards that can be used. Yeah, yeah. So I, th I think I paid a late fee once, and I put myself on auto pay, and I've never paid one again. So if I go on the website immediately, there's like a online form that I can fill out, and I'll I have no idea. Go to the website. If there's you know, not, if you come in the you come in and make your payment here. Yeah, there's it's it's there's something that says the auto pay. Um, yeah, you can even pay your bill on on our website. Yeah, I haven't done that for I haven't done that, but I have the auto pay, so it comes out of my checking yeah. account every month. I don't have to so worry about it. So if it's the twentieth of the month and you know that your water bill is due and you're not here, you could literally go on the website in real time and pay your bill at that moment. Yep, you yeah, you sure can. Well, there you go. Okay. And another thing, we don't get the bills; we only get the late notices. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I think we talked mm -hmm. about that. You don't you don't get your you don't get the original bill. No. Where's it go to? I don't know. But you only get the late notices. Well, why don't you check your address and make sure that your address is filed correctly so that you we, get we it. They're getting the late notices. The late notices yeah, that's are going working, to the same so address as You are well. getting it somehow. I'm, I'm not getting a bill. Uh, would, the, post, the post office doesn't have that bad of a record. That. Sorry. Actually, they actually did it. I would check with the post office. I actually ordered something <laughs> from eBay and they sent it to Corbo instead of sending it to my address. So actually they did. Another issue. Uh, I would check with them on that because yeah. I have definitely yeah. gotten other people's mail and other people have definitely gotten my mail. Mine too. So I would check with the post office for sure on that. Okay. Another issue is this lawnmower thing. Um, they charge five hundred dollars. This bill doesn't have like any breakdown of what the costs are. It just says five hundred dollars and over on five twenty six. How would you like it line itemed? What happened? I mean, they said they came twice. They said they came twice. It doesn't say they came twice on there. Well, okay. what happened is you didn't mow our lawn and in our area your lawn and in our ordinance if your lawn gets so high the city automatically mows it and then assesses it to the owner of the property but was it necessary for them to come twice um, i don't know did you not mow it twice uh, we don't know how fast that grass is going to go it was it was mowed the problem with that lawn is it got so high and we we tagged it and they still didn't do it and we waited for a while ricky went and knocked on their door a couple times trying to talk to them about it it still didn't get mowed, and then... Um, did, did you send anybody to talk to us? Uh, Ricky went over to your house several times, but didn't, didn't know who was there. The doorbell. But then I talked to um, the younger gentleman on the phone, and he asked me for extra time, and I generously gave him extra time, 
and he promised me it would get mowed that next weekend and I said okay I'll give you to the through the weekend this was like a Wednesday or a Thursday and Monday we went out there and it still was not mowed so we ca called and contacted several mowers that we know they all said no way I'm not doing it it was clear up to here so the only way we could get it done is to hire Emil Green who is a company that has their own insurance and everything that we can hire and they had to come out and do it they were the only ones that were willing to do it because of the height so that's why we did not charge them anything except for what Emerald Green charged us. I understand, you know, and as you say, you need to do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. But my question is, why just only one uh, more uh, company? Why, why do you I just explained that. I contacted three or four companies, and they all said no way they weren't going to do it. Because it was too to, long, it was they don't want to be involved. I, I, I contacted them myself and they said that, yeah, they are willing to come and to do it. And we have an appointment with, with one of them to come at, at the 6 p.m. But they already came and they more the, the, the grass. This is my question. Well, but you can understand and be reasonable that if your grass is that tall, you've neglected it for a good long amount of time. So, and if she gave you even extra time, I think a reasonable person could acknowledge that yes you dropped the ball on mowing your lawn and now you know the situation there's I know high school kids running around junior high kids that will mow your lawn for 25 bucks mm -hmm. so we can get you a list maybe of some people who would do that for you and you could call them right up and arrange something so that this doesn't happen again but I mean you have to take some responsibility for both of these situations why did, why did it come twice? I don't understand why did it have to come twice I mean, it must you know, have been well, super maybe tall. because it was too long the first time yeah, for them to get... If they mowed it one time, just logically, if they mowed it one time, they don't need to come twice. How right. long was don't, it We don't know those. how long it was. was it, it, Do was you have it, any photographs it of it? Say, this doesn't say how long it was. So no, what, you, what you have is when we send We have photographs of it. Do we have photographs of it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we do. It was 10 inches long. We have photographs. But if you take a look at the bill, it doesn't say any of this. I mean, it just says $500. Uh, I don't think, like, in what world somebody comes one or two times that you charge $500. It doesn't even say that they came twice. There's some stuff at the bottom there that's crossed out, that's, like, whited out. So let me ask so you this. No the if you had a bill from Emerald Green that said, we came and mowed your lawn twice and it was 10 inches tall and we're charging you $500 to do that, would you still be complaining about it or would you have just paid that bill? No, I still can be complaining yeah. because there are other people who do it for less. Like you said, there are kids running around. There was a kid coming at 6 o'clock that day. Well, but uh, here's the, the thing. Media. You should have found those people who would do it for less before the city had to get involved, and then you would not be standing up here tonight trying to plead your case. Yeah, well, I just moved there. But yeah. Anyways. I mean, we don't want to make life hard on people, but we have to follow rules and regulations yeah, and I'm sure your neighbors don't want your yard to be no, 10 yeah. inches long either. You see that we know, we know the rules and regulations. Both of us called in that day. Both of us we are university teachers, professors. We are not coming over here just to complain for something. Sure. Yeah. But anyway. Well you're very educated so you should be able to thank, understand thank, the comments. Thank, Do you thank, want thank a copy you, of thank them? Thank you very much. Yeah. Anyway, we uh, submit a case over here and uh, we get the answers and we really appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on. Request from Vicki Bennett to speak regarding complaints reported to the police department. Now you're on, Vicki. Okay, my complaints are all things that the city should be taking care of. Barking dogs, the way people are mowing their lawn, the way cars are speeding down through the alley and around the block. I called the other night because of barking dogs and someone shoot the BB gun in the alley. The officer didn't respond. I called Ricky's phone, which he keeps telling me, go call me, call me, I'll take care of everything. But the call to him was 8.59. I called the next number, which went right to Lane County at 9.10. The officer drove by at 9.25, but he did not come back to my house until 9.50 and said that he just got the call. We went and looked. There was no shooting going on, but 
he went over to the neighbors that were sitting outside and they talked until 10.30 about barbecue and beer. I just like the same respect that anybody else gets when I make a complaint. I'd like to address it, you guys. Um, that particular call the night, the officer, we operate on computer systems called MPS, and it sends us a call. Officer Frankfurt received that call one hour after it was made by the dispatchers, sent it to his MDC, and that's when he got the call. So she got the call, but the dispatcher didn't relay it to him until then. And uh, it's all documented. Because it was a concern of mine that if somebody did call, mm -hmm. for her call was for shots fired, that's kind of a bad deal. Yeah. Does the dispatcher prioritize calls based upon, you know, shots fired, there's a dead body in my alley, or someone mowed their grass and blew it on my sidewalk? Yeah, they prioritize right it, right one, two, or three. Okay. It comes up for a thing. What it does, you look on your screen, it says, this one particular case, when he got it, after he got it, it says pending. So if I log okay. into my computer tomorrow morning, and there's a call that waiting for me, let's say, let's say a P, mm -hmm. and the address, Lisbon. The okay. dispatcher. I just, I don't know what the, the workload. more or less messed up. Okay. I just, I don't know what the workload of the dispatchers is. And if they get 25 calls in a row for car accidents and one for grass clippings, do they ignore the grass clippings because there's 25 much more important things to deal with? No, it'll still be on there. Okay. Okay. But which Dan one would they respond to first is what he's asking. And I did on the one on the shooting. Right, because they did they didn't send it to them. Yeah. You would respond to the car accident before you would respond to a grass clipping if they came at the same time is oh, what yeah. Nate's asking. Sure. Yeah. As far as the phone, she probably did try to call me. Um, I was at the baseball game with my family. And I don't you know, mention my phone. There's other people here. You had you had an officer on duty, and he was reacting to absolutely the needs of the community, and he has to also make an assessment on what the level of importance for the call is, I guess. So, so do we know what happened when he did respond to the call? Then, from his perspective, uh, yes, he, he didn't find anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't find anybody shooting anything, and. Uh, do you know, Vicki, do you know who was shooting the BB gun? No, because I wasn't walking down the alley when it was dark to see who was shooting. I'll blame you. No, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying too. to be sarcastic about it. I mean, I just wondered if you knew who was. I mean, you probably no, have, I you have put, I was going to say you probably have an idea who no, was. No, I did not see nobody. I just heard, heard it. Yeah. What time of night was this? Oh, uh, this, this was that, because uh, it says, because Jeff left me a note, and it says, uh, well, Amy looked into it also. Mm -hmm. uh, he was on a traffic stop prior to call. He cleared from that traffic stop at 2059. So there should have been something showing there. He was a vehicle incident at, at uh, 2112 is when it was received. But at 925, he drove down 3rd Avenue, up Jackson, and down 5th Avenue. It wasn't dispatched to Officer Frankfurt until 2047. So he was doing a regular patrol, and he had not gotten her call yet, is what you're saying, because Lynn County had not dispatched it to him at that time. So at 925, when he drove by, that was just a coincidence. Correct. Yeah. And then he actually got the call at 950 or whatever. And then he had to have backup with two Mount Vernon police. Well, well, with shots, shots fired, fired, I would Yeah, want shots fired. Yeah, I would definitely it's, have backup on shots well, fired. it was a BB gun. It wasn't like it um, was the 22 well, that Leonard Well, we don't know. People, people get shot all the time with BB guns. Yeah, there's good BB yeah, guns out there. You wouldn't want to get hit with anything. Yeah, because <laughs> that, the just shot a, you heard with the BB gun doesn't mean that's all they have. Yeah. Anytime there's a gun involved, because what they call the radio is the shots fired. Somebody with a 1032. 1032 means a gun. 
And you're probably wondering if you have more than just a month from the down. Vicki, um, you're obviously very upset, so it makes me wonder, is this an ongoing issue or? Well, let's see, we've got a whole notebook here of dog barking that the guy threw walnuts at us, threw this and that, he dumped oil in my yard and killed plants. I like that. couldn't do nothing. Um, Matter of fact, I spent three years of not being able to go out of my back door because he called me a fucking cunt every time I went out the door. Now, is this is all still the same this? stuff from back in the day? That was that was back in. This was from 05. I, mean, I think this was when I was on the council 2011, before. 2011, this happened. That was with the neighbor Steve. Yeah, it, does and he live there? A, we we tried to set up a deal with the neighborhood. Didn't work out so well. At the no, time. it was a witch hunt that my head was knocked off, and everybody told me to leave town. I should move. So we. Uh, Charged him three times, a matter of fact, and he was convicted. And well, what happened? Vicki, you're gonna have to let him speak because if you do not let him speak and keep interrupting him, we do not get the whole story. So, you're going to have to let him speak. Okay, sorry. So, he was convicted. As far as there were some other things that we had suspected him on doing, but then we didn't, we really couldn't prove it. Does he still live there? No. no. So now, is the issue with a new neighbor? Yeah. And to clarify, on a barking dog, if they're not barking after a certain time, there's not much you can do. Five o'clock in the morning is a good time. Isn't there some dogs? hours that that you can force the barking dog? That's what problem. I try to do when this happened. Is try to get the council to do something on how many dogs he had. Three large dogs. It wasn't just one, it was three barking nonstop. I worked third uh, shift if, if, and had to sleep during the day. If you could let our city code doesn't answer. really success, specify what time dogs, it's just annoyance and disturbance. Yeah. So if there's a dog continue barking at noon, you just keep barking, barking, barking. So if somebody was playing a loud radio, would we have a time frame on that? No. No, it would just be if a neighbor called in and said, my neighbor is disturbing me because of a loud radio. The ordinance pretty much states it's up to the discretion of the officer that's called. To the and it wouldn't really matter if there was a time frame on it, because if the time frame was you can't do this from 10 o'clock to 6 a.m., if she's mm -hmm. trying to sleep during the day at noon, she wouldn't fall under that anyway. So right. this would be a separate circumstance anyway. Yeah. And I'm assuming you've chatted with your neighbor and said to them, I work third shift and I sleep during the day and I'm just politely asking you if you could please do something with your dog so he's not barking all day long and waking me up. Has that conversation happened? No, and I thought the police was going to do that when he went over and gave him, I just asked, give him an ordinance because he's new in town that there's a barking ordinance. That, it doesn't there sound like we no have reason. one so that you can't give him that. Yes, it's... Yeah. Noise, noise ordinance probably. Oh. Right there. So we do have a barking ordinance or we don't have a barking ordinance? It's, but I'm noise saying it's, it's up to the discretion of the officer when they go out there. So it doesn't say how loud they can bark or what hour they can bark. It just says if a complaint is issued, it's up to the discretion of the officer. And what would that discretion be? It's pretty vague, Well, unfortunately. What? The dog, we should arrive and the dog isn't barking. We can go back to the complaint and say, talk to them. And if they want to file, sign a complaint to the effect that it was disturbing them, we let them do that and we give them that option. So, did that happen? No. I know for when I responded not to Vicky's barking dogs but other barking dog complaints, people do have outside dogs, and so I explained to them. If your dog is barking at something, such as a person walking by or another animal, that is animal behavior. If the dog is just barking because it wants attention and nobody's around and it's just constantly barking, that's an annoyance. Or you've got it chained up or something Correct. nonstop so that's all day. What we would, that's what I have done about it previous. You know, if it's barking at a leaf blown across the street, well, then maybe not keep the dog outside all day. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that's the best way that I've been able to explain it to people is that there is animal behavior, such as somebody walking by or another animal in the yard or near the yard. That's going to happen. Annoyance is on a different level. 
And so Vicki, this dog barks all day? Every day? No. No. It just barked this one but day. He and it had was annoying. three dogs. He put he put them out at nine. Well, right, but that's I mean, literally, that was when I was on the council last time. So we can't talk about that anymore because that's over and done with, and the guy doesn't even live there anymore. So the new situation, if you have an issue with the new situation, we need to figure out how to fix that for everybody. Well, there's eleven dogs in my neighborhood. Yeah, there's probably so that many constant. in mine. It's not one dog; it's all of them. And when one barks, the yeah, it's a chain reaction, right? I mean, it happens in my neighborhood too. I also have a neighbor who has a little hot rod car that he likes to start up on Saturday mornings at like 7.30 in the morning and rev for an hour every Saturday morning. But I mean, that's just part of living in town, I think. But would would you go talk to the person, Rick, and say to them, hey, we have a person in your neighborhood that, that works third shift and they sleep during the day. Is it possible to keep the dog on a low kilter? Absolutely. Would that make you feel better? What about the burning garbage? Isn't that an ordinance too? We had a call to cross the street from Andrew's house. I didn't see the garbage, I seen the grass clippings. And I stopped there three times and the third time I finally got her and she, she put it down. I didn't see any garbage and Vicki said that there was garbage and she did smell it. I don't know what was in it. Look, she had a bunch of grass. And you told her that that's not allowed? Yeah, I told her that you can't be burning grass. Anything you have as a recreational fire in town, it's got to be occupied. You just can't set on fire and let it go. She okay. complied. She went in and got a hose. It Come was on. a plastic ladder is what they were burning. And that was a one-time thing? It was plastic burning. That was a one-time thing? Yeah, and it hasn't happened since there. Rick went over? Okay, so that's that's situation solved. Anything else other than the dog? Well, her son seems to think the roads are a racetrack and he zooms through the alley and doesn't stop at the stop signs. I'm worried about the kids in the neighborhood. Sure. That oh. walk down that so alley we could com patrol, patrol that area Absolutely. a couple extra times. That was a complaint. Well, was addressed. Evidently, Amy has stopped him a few times for speeding. She took care of that. She uh, well, it's house. not taken care of. It. Vicki, you so have to stop him. interrupting him. I went to Officer Ford went to the house to speak to him. Uh, he wasn't there. He was working. So she was off a couple days. So she went back and caught him at his place of employment. So I learned that this was his one and only one. And so if you guys are patrolling the area and it happens again, he'll be getting a ticket. Absolutely. Does that sound fair? For you guys? Vicky? He gets off work at 11 o'clock from gates and he's sitting down there like 10 minutes after he's getting zooming down. Zooming down. Alley. Sure. It was every day after school at the same time, on the clock, and he would come zooming down that alley. Of course, we yelled at him, had it went faster. Well, I assume if they patrol the area or watch him a little bit more and he gets to get hit, that'll slow him down quickly. He's already been ticketed three times. Hmm. It doesn't well, change. It, it doesn't sounds change. like his license needs to be taken away then. Um, we don't even decide. They don't decide I don't think that. you guys have that power. No. Uh, no. Our real transportation does, but yes, I had spoken to him. I gave him the three tickets. Um, he was speeding in the school zone. He was well aware. Um, unfortunately, as much as we would like to think that tickets or a charge changes behavior, it doesn't always. And unfortunately, he's on the end of not wanting to change, so we will continue to ticket him every time we do a violation. At some point, he will become a habitual offender and they will take his license or suspend it or something, but that's up to the DOT. That's completely up to the DOT. Yeah. It, it, there used to be a rule with so many speeding tickets and you lost your license. Is that still in effect or does well, it have to be Well, I can tell you if highway? you get four in a year, you have to go to driving school. Oh, okay. Well, yep. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing, the last time I was over over Vicki, she complained about the house next door to her. So I took photos and said, give me Connie and talk to Connie about it. Um, she sent, has sent notices. Doing. Just following nuisance process, yeah. yeah. Um, here, these are what we happens. have been since November of 2017. We uh, take the photos, 
give her the address. She signs, signs sends him a letter, and then she's got a big board. I don't know if you've ever seen it. She writes it down, and then she works She works on it. And if they don't comply, then when she files it with the, curve, the with the city attorney, and the city attorney files a municipal fraction. And it's a time-consuming process. Because mm -hmm. yeah. they get several they chances or whatever. Yeah. Overnight. The problem with this one is we've been trying to serve since November 2017, and he does not have a P.O. box or a mailbox at the home. Yeah, There's a mailbox. mailbox there because Tuesday night he was he there and took mail. three hands full of mail out of the mailbox. Well, the post office keeps sending them back. Oh, well, that's because his mailbox is so full so of stuff. So if, can't get if I can more finish, it did. Um, we finally, I did send one out on May 31st, and he did pick that one up. So he is aware now that... Um, and this time I didn't do a nuisance. I served him with an abandonment of property and dilapidated dangerous building. So I took the more serious route this time. Sure. So um, that's as high as it can go. If he does not respond um, in so many days, then I will send it to Mark and um, Mark will take it from there. But it will come back to you guys because in order for us to proceed with the dangerous building and um, abandoned building, we have to give them, unfortunately, six months. There has to be no so that process starts once we serve that letter. So it's, it's going to be a lengthy process that we're going to have to go through, but I've, I've started the, the proceedings. So. Well, and hopefully, if he has six months, he would fix it and clean it up and make it right. I mean, that would be the ultimate goal for any of these nuisance and stuff like that. We're not like trying to pick on people and make life no. miserable for them. We're trying to just get it cleaned up and make it better for the neighbors and everybody. Mm -hmm. I think the main concern in this, this house is the holes yeah. that are inside where the where, where the animals are going in and out. Yeah. I know, I know what you're talking about. times now for a live trap to catch the coon that's living under it a year ago and still have not gotten a live trap from the city. I found two of them. Do we do that? Do we, do we, have we give live, live traps? traps to residents Almost to trap animals? No, we can do it ourselves. Okay. We, don't we, can, okay. we can keep beating this around the bush. Rick will talk, go and talk to the person that has the dog. Yeah. And the uh, speeder. Don't try to keep an eye on him. They know who he is. So, and they started the nuisance process. It started a nuisance process, so we're going to move on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 5B, approval of downtown re rehabilitation grant for Travis Island. Travis has finished his project. He has submitted all of the receipts and proof of payment. And um, Mike Williams has went and done an inspection, and also the historical preservation has signed off, so we're ready to issue his him his reimbursement grant. I'll move to approve. Second. A motion and second. Travis. Aye. Nate. Aye. Stephanie. Aye. Tim. Aye. Doug. Aye. Uh, approval of change order number two. Washington Street intersection improvements in the amount of $1,164.89. Dave is not with us tonight, but um, Travis will speak on his behalf. So, we've, this has been done for a while. Um, we're just following up on the paperwork. What happened when we dug up the Washington Street and Cemetery Road intersection, we found soils that were not set up for, basically we're gonna create the same problem we had before, the road was gonna bust up and everything. Well, they originally thought they were gonna put geo grid in, and as a geo grid expert came out and said, no, let's not do that, let's just add rock, which was cheaper. So we ended up digging out the soft spot, putting rock in there instead of the geo grid, which was originally in the project to begin with. So yes, it's a change order, but the ultimate project is still under what it should be. Make a motion to approve change order number two. Uh, motion. Second. Second. Doug, aye. John. Aye. Stephanie. Aye. Travis. Aye. Nate. Aye. Approval of pay estimate number two, Washington Street intersection improvements in the amount of $43,919.72. This is the same project that Travis was just talking about, and it does include the change order in it, so the amount is what Doug just said. Make a motion to approve pay estimate in the stated amount. You got a motion. Second. Second. Travis. Aye. Nate. Aye. Stephanie. Aye. John. Aye. Doug. Aye. E, approval of purchase of leaf vacuum. I had brought to you guys um, 
the option of purchasing a leaf um, vac from Johnson County Refuse. They did have two of them that were available. Um, you guys gave me approval to purchase as long as it was under my um, $5,000 mm -hmm. amount. Um, Travis, when he was looking at a dump truck that we were bidding on, um, that same city, um, was it Naperville, yep. Illinois, had a leaf um, vacuum that was much better quality, much more advanced, and it wouldn't take four guys to operate it. Um, it's a remote control one, and they, we were able to get that for the same price that we would probably have paid for Johnson County. So. Um, we issued a check for four thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> right under. I, I did, no, I had chipped it out. Sure, I was chipped you, in the dollar. <laughs> so Thank I you for just, that donation. <laughs> I just kind of want to go for, through the formality of just making the motion and second to. Make I'll move. Go, go ahead. I'll move to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Doug, I. John. Aye. Stephanie. Aye. Travis. Aye. Nate. Aye. Discussion and possible action on request of budget blinds for a TIF rebate and tax abatement. I've been working with budget blinds for quite a while now, and I think they're all here with us tonight. Um, I know John is, and Novox are here also, who are um, the owners of the, the lot that they're looking to bid on um, and to build on. Um, we went back and forth on different um, incentives that the city could possibly offer. Um, I gave you guys some information of the, the building they're looking to do. It should have, be on your form. So there should be a front view, a back view, uh, a layout, and also um, a copy of the proposals that um, we had submitted. I had offered a five-year TIF rebate on the commercial section of it, and they were also looking at putting apartments on the second floor. Um, when we do TIF rebates um, on residential, we get the LMI um, qualifications in there that we have to abide by, so I thought it would be better if we went through the process of just a tax abatement for the residential, which is um, they only pay a certain percentage of the property tax for this year, it might, like, might be 80%, 70%, 60%, or um, I forgot what we did on this one. Um, so it's a, we went 80%, 70%, 60%, 50%, and then 40%. Um, so those are the two that I offered. Um, they did come back to me and uh, we met and they would like the council to consider a 10-year tax rebate on the commercial part instead of a five-year. And I do believe they are here tonight so you can talk with them and, and they can ask any questions and you guys can ask any questions. How many employees are going to be employed at this new building? Um, well, we have um, offices and everything staffed for about a dozen people on site all the time. And, and will this be more than you're employing at your present location? Actually, not necessarily because a lot of us are working from home. Um, you know, that's kind of one of the things is, for what we do, we don't necessarily need space in town. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we'd be just as happy to get a couple acres up by like P and K or something. Um, we were presented with the option from some other people um, that were looking to open some businesses and understanding their frustration. And so we looked at this as an opportunity for Lisbon as well. Uh, primarily just because Mount Vernon's almost impossible to build it. So, uh, and as far as like asking for the TIF, you know, Lisbon kind of set a precedent that that's what brothers got. Um, and I think this is much of an asset to the community of brothers. I see the value in it too, but I, and it's been a few months since um, Bill was in front of us talking about it. Brothers employs like 70 people yeah. um, and, and got the 10 year deal. Um, you guys are going to be one fifth of that or, or one sixth of that, much, much less. Um, I think the five. I think the five-year offer is a pretty generous one. I mean, it, if you look at, I mean, if you're looking at only, you know, the two thousand square foot that we're asking for, I mean, we're trying to put some other major businesses in there that aren't necessarily just ours. Yeah, based on this plan, it looks like you got a daycare trying to be, or possibly yeah, on one and side, and then a, and then another open space to be. Some other issues, and then there's about another thirty-five, thirty-eight hundred square foot of leasable space to Highway Thirty. And that's the main reason for some of this. And until you know you have all that square footage filled, 
um, you know, you need a little cushion and help, you know, from all parties, obviously. Mm -hmm. If we had that fill, I wouldn't be near as concerned, so. Good. Well, Budget Lens has 29 employees, so, I mean, you could have 29 coming in and out, but as far as, like, office space within that on any given day, it's not the total 29. Okay. What's going to be the taxable value of the building when it's completed? Um, we still have saying. yet to have that number, but it's probably going to be in the 2.7 to 3 million range. Okay. We were estimating uh, 1.260 1. for the um, commercial part, and I think on um, about 997.5 for the, what we estimated when we did the incentive spreadsheets. So it, it could go one way or the other, and that's the taxable amount. And with Brothers, with, uh, 10 year, was that a declining or a fixed rate? It was a fixed 70% for 10 70%. years. And that was a TIF rebate. It was not, there was no residential in that. So this, yeah. this one, will, the whole top four will be residential. Mm -hmm. Which will generate some income. Mm -hmm. In a much need for some higher end rentals in the community. Well, I, I, I don't have as much of a problem with the 10 years over the five year, but I like the declining balance rather than a, a fixed rate for the total term. Well, this, we, we talked about a 70%, so it would not be a 100% TIF rebate, it would be a 70%. No, but that over 10 years, that's 10 times 7,700 were uh, declining, I think it comes out to 550, so it's a little less expensive. And you get more front end uh, benefit to the builder. Even until like you could get those spots filled. Yeah, yeah, so he gets, gets 100%. The, the first year and, and then the second year it's 80 percent well it'd be 90 percent on a 10 year or 80 percent on a five year yeah, yeah. I understand. yeah so you're saying that uh, 10 years for all the, for the commercial and five years for the residential is what they were requesting yes Well, I like John's idea too of the scaling, sliding scale. I mean, that helps him in the front end until yeah. he gets the other spots, you know, leased out or whatever, and then it doesn't, it's not quite as much for the city. Would you right. like me to run those sheets and then put it back on the agenda? Yeah, probably because that's not up to me. It's not my money that goes. <laughs> yeah. No, and I, I didn't expect us to come yeah. to a, a complete decision tonight, but we can run those sheets. Yeah, definitely. And then we can get back together on the 25th for the council meeting. So, different, though. Um, well, what we the residential one would stay the same. Yeah. But on the commercial, it would start uh, for a 10 year, instead of a seven, we were doing a five year at 70% straight each year, but it would start at 100% and then drop down each year after that. Yeah. So it would go 190, 80, 70. Yeah. Okay, I'll run those, get, get them to you. Okay. All right, approval for attorney to proceed with abandoned property at 809 West Main Street, according to Iowa Code 657A.10A. Uh, this property has been sitting empty for a couple years. Um, the bank or um, financial institution that has taken it over is doing nothing. Um, they're not mowing, the city's mowing it every week. Um, garbage is starting to be dumped there. Uh, there's holes in the roof. Um, it's falling apart. So I did serve them with the same notice that I did the property on East 4th. Um, dangerous, dilapidated building, um, abandoned building. They had 48 hours to respond or request a hearing and they did sign the green card that they did receive it but did not reply. Um, so I contacted Mark to see where we go next on this. Um, there's a procedure that we have to follow which unfortunately um, requires us six months of, of time to deal with it. Um, he, would, he just thought it'd be best if I brought it before you guys to make sure that it's something you want to proceed with because what could happen in the long run is 
the house is condemned or um, and then after so long it comes to us um, we would have the expense of tearing it down I mean the lot and everything would be ours but we would have the expense of tearing it down and if it did have asbestos we would be responsible for removing the asbestos uh, I'm not sure if it does um, it's something we'd have to look into but so it there is a cost to us and there is consequences by us doing this but I'm I don't think anything is going to happen with the house. It's been probably two, going on three years now. And we can't even get the, the people to actually respond to us. They won't answer our phone calls. They won't answer our letters. Um, we've off, already certified several mowings last year to the property tax. So we've already done, we've mowed it twice so far this year. <coughs> and it's just getting extremely costly. So, so it says um requires an enforcement officer to examine the property. Yep. Do we do that after six months or do we do it now? We would do, need to do that now and we could send our zoning administrator out there to um, do that. Um, I, like I said, I started the process with what our, our code says, but then now we have to follow the, the Iowa code and, and follow that procedure. I'll say send our, send our building guy out there and let's get this going. Yeah, I, think yeah. So. I agree. The longer we wait, the more it's going to cost yeah. us. Yeah. Is that a motion? Yeah, Doug? is that a motion then? Sure. Doug? Second. I'll second. Motion is second. Doug? Aye. John? Aye. Steph? Aye. Nate? Aye. Travis? Aye. Uh, 6A, discussion and possible approval of second reading of ordinance 05-2018, revising chapter 106.05, disposal requirements. And this is just changing the ordinance on the, the garbage to allow for our new our new service. Make a motion to approve. Second. A motion to second. Travis? Aye. Nate? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. John? Aye. Doug Aye. Resolution 30-2018 to fix a date for a public hearing on proposal to enter into a sewer revenue loan and disbursement agreement and to borrow money there under in a principal amount not to exceed seven hundred thousand dollars. This is for the one point four million dollar um, sewer project that we've already um, signed the contract for. Um, the we did receive the five hundred thousand dollar grant, so there would be a remaining seven hundred thousand that we would have to borrow. No, we are going to use the SRF loan for that, which is a low interest loan that needs to be paid back by sewer revenues. Motion to set the public hearing for June 25th. Second. And a motion to second. Travis? Aye. Nate? Aye. 70? Aye. John? Aye. Doug? Aye. Approval and authorization for mayor to sign legal services agreement or engagement letter with Dorsey and Whitney LEC in connection with the SRF sewer improvement loan. Same thing. Dorsey and Whitney are are the legal representatives for us on this loan and they will be doing all the paperwork for us so we need to assign a an agreement with them to do that. And our motion? So moved. Second. second. Motion and second. All in the third. Nate? Aye. Travis? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. John? Aye. No guy. Resolution 31-20-118 approving transfer of funds. This isn't going to happen too often, but we're actually transferring money <laughs> back to. Um, I transferred money from uh, water and sewer to debt service to pay for the bond payments that came due um, June 1st. Um, and the spreadsheet that I had and went from the amounts were a little bit different than the, the principal amounts that came through with the, the bond payments. So I need to transfer that remaining ba uh, balance from debt service back to water and sewer. I'll move to approve. The motion. Second. Second. Doug, aye. John? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Nate? Aye. Travis? Aye. Resolution 32-2018, appointing Jason Blanks to the Board of Adjustments. So moved. The motion? Second. The second. Doug? Aye. John? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Nate? Aye. Travis? Aye. Resolution 33-2018, approving preliminary plot Novak 6 edition. This was approved quite a while ago, but since a year had, has passed on the 6th edition, uh, we would need to approve it again. It has already went through planning and zoning, and they recommended that the council approve. 
I'll move, move to approve. approve. Motion. Second. Motion. Second. Doug. Aye. John. Aye. Stephanie. Aye. Travis. Aye. Nate. Aye. Resolution 342018, approving plot of survey number 2263. This is the two lots owned by um, Al Opatz and Ann and Ken Opatz. They're taking part of one of the lots and adding it to the other lot. And it has went through planning and zoning and they recommended approval. Your motion? Move to approve. Second. Second. Travis. Aye. Nate. Aye. Stephanie. Aye. John. Aye. Doug Aye. Resolution 352018, appointing Mike Swatos to the fire department. So moved. A motion. Second. Second. Doug. Aye. John. Aye. Travis. Aye. Stephanie. Aye. Nate. Aye. New business. Discussion, discussion and possible changes to parking ordinance and downtown parking. We talked about this a little bit at the last meeting and I kind of gave you guys some homework to drive around and take a look and see what you see. Um, Ricky has also, um, I took all the parking spaces, the no parking spaces out of the ordinance and gave a list um, to Ricky. He started looking through them just to make sure all of them are still, should be no parking. Um, he's also checking signs while he's doing that just to make sure we don't have signs that need to be replaced. Um, so we've started that process, but I think um, as we move forward on the changes here, we need to start with the downtown. And I don't know if any of the people are here tonight. I thought, um, Hudson's would be here tonight to talk to you about it. But I did print out um, four sheets of the downtown area, and I thought we could start with that area and then have Ricky continue um, when he has time to look at the other no parking spaces that are in the ordinance. So the biggest concern to start off with was the spaces inside, um, in front of the body shops. That was the biggest concern because when all the spaces are full downtown um, and people are parking there, all day long there's no space for um, them to do estimates and, and that kind of stuff so that was our first complaint and then we were also looking at um, no parking in front of any property downtown that has an overhead door um, which would be <coughs> the body shops um, car Nick wash. Walton the car, car wash. wash and so the only other places that we were concerned about um, Travis if you can help me out here um, in front of the new escape house, um, the, driveway. the driveway there. And there are a few spaces, almost all of them are diagonal, which our ordinance says that they're supposed to be diagonal downtown. But then in front of um, the escape house and Nick Walton's and those, there are they are straight in parking spaces. So um, I don't know if we want to leave them that way or if we want them all to be diagonal or what you guys feel would be the best option for the downtown. Yeah. That's where next truck is Because we do, um, well, we sh should have the paint painter out this week sometime. It was in the process of getting repaired, and we want to get started on these lines in the four blocks of downtown as soon as we can. And there's the loading zone that's the business is no longer there. Key keys, actually, the ordinance says that you cannot park in front of key keys, and yeah. key keys, and everybody does. So it's it's just it was from yeah. years and years ago when yeah. it was a furniture store. So right. we're we're going to take that one out of the ordinance. I th I think is for uniformity to have them all diagonal makes sense yeah. to me, unless there's some compelling reason. Would we lose a spot if we made Nick's them diagonal gonna, there? Yeah, Nick's going to have problems with uh, we'd lose one spot in front of mm. sorry Walton's building. Yeah. Because if we take that and make that no parking, when you switch that diagonal, you take up more space. More space. Yeah. And we can do it either way. We just need to yeah. change the order, the ordinance to reflect that. So if we made them all straight parking, we would gain more parking spots downtown overall. We probably would a few, I'm but it, sure would, it might be more difficult to see. Because of the bump outs. So yeah, we're not really this, wide enough to. Yeah, if you look at this, Stephanie, mm -hmm. and then kind of by down by Barbara Johns too, by mm -hmm. angling them that created that other spot where if you go straight you're gonna have nothing yeah there. gotcha so in those areas now i have not measured it <laughs> Done. well by a diagonal parking we got a few more feet in the road yep. yeah than you would have if everyone was straight in right. so. 
but I don't know how to improve. I mean, every everything else is diagonal except the escape room and Nick's and, and that's over, where over we to D&D. We have the most overhead yeah. doors there too though. Yeah. So that's probably why. That's I don't see how that's going to work as a diagonal parking. I don't know that you can right. really make a change. But that's good reason to leave it straight. Yeah. And then just change the ordinance accordingly. Yeah. We can do that. So they're talking about having a place to do estimates. Um, isn't there a way to designate one spot as a 20 minute parking or something? So they can do estimates, so to speak. This is only for estimates, parking kind of deal. But couldn't they use the driveway to do their estimates where their overhead door is? And I was hoping they would be here tonight so they could explain a little bit I think last time more. I talked to Jan, she told me that she works on Monday nights, and so she would never be able yeah. to come on a Monday. But I thought she was going to come that Tuesday. She was going to come to the last yeah. meeting. She made arrangements to, to come to the last meeting. And, and there, is, there is a light pole in front of Hudson's Body Shop where you could put a sign yeah. that says for, for business parking Only. between the hours of 8 and 4.30 or 5. Mm -hmm. And then we'd have to see what, I mean, there's another light pole over here in front of, well, not really in front of his body shop, but. But you're suggesting we gain some spots after hours or? Yeah, I don't think okay. you want to leave it closed. Just during normal business right. hours, yeah. Right. I mean, because you have two. Two businesses down there that could run you know till two in the morning on a busy night so teed up parking spaces that are you know for not we could always put something on this one here. the escape room too i mean that could that could be open later yep. mm -hmm. and be yeah and benefit from parking that opens after five yeah it's like i said it's a nice problem to have but yeah <laughs> so in front of there by nick's and the escape room i mean those are straight on we don't want to angle because i mean do we want nick to have parking in the front of his or <coughs> well, he so, does so he does i think you'd go from the five spots you see to down to probably four angled look at the if you look where the white car is by jackson street yeah you can kind of see the faint straight lines oh, okay yeah because we had it straight there for a yep. while so basically if you go down in front of the body shop down here that would no longer be a parking spot you would lose that spot down here where the black car is. Okay. Because you'd have to keep that angle to keep your straight lines. Mm. And then you would lose the one spot on the other side of Dan's driveway when you angle that. Okay. But they do also have the spots um, that we're gonna block off with an X for no parking that are right in front of their driveway. So they do have that area to use. Yeah, I don't know why they wouldn't use that as for the estimating space. Yeah. Temporarily, yeah. No, get get the car in there, do the job, get it out yeah. of there. Well, if that's reasonable. I'm just playing devil's advocate, but if we have that blocked off with a big X that says no parking and they park a car there to do estimates, then somebody complains, what happens then? Yeah. I think I think you explained that's in the operation of the business, and that's why the spots designated no parking is for the well, sake of the business. That, then? Because both the body shops do have almost the width of two spaces in, in, for their driveway. Unless you make those parking places and uh, it's just temporary parking during the business hours, and then people can park after hours. But I know Hudson's do work late some nights too, though. I mean, yeah. could you do like 15 minute parking in those spots or whatever? There are streets, so we can do, they're city streets. Yeah. So we, we set the rules. It's just coming up with the right one. And it's like I said, it's not a decision we have to make tonight. I just wanted to get the yeah. ball rolling and, and get moving on it. Mm -hmm. Rick, do you have a thought? You're the one who's going to have to enforce it, so. Amy. And Go Amy. Ahead. Yeah. And Amy. You got a thought, Amy? Uh, my concern would be whether it's 15 minutes or two hour parking, the enforcement of it is difficult, but would we tow or would we just ticket and leave it there for the next 24 hours? So there's, the idea is nice and, and I believe a majority of people would follow the rules. Yeah. 
the few that choose not to, we would have to have a recourse of what we would do right that moment. Because we could put a ticket on the windshield and walk away and still can sit there all day. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be like the red zone at the airport. If it's in there, you tow it. Yes, yeah. exactly. And you can make that part of the ordinance. Anything else? So what's the chance of taking the downtown part the overnight part for the last like October through April so leave it over? All year? No. No overnight? Just enforce Just it during the summer months. months. Oh. Only do October, it November, December, January, February, March. It'd just be we'd have to do an ordinance change on it. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're going to do an yeah. ordinance yep. change anyway, now would be a good time to do that. I don't right. see a problem with that during those months. Do you? I guess unless we have a snowstorm in April, then we're SOL. Yeah. But well, we you did. can we, we can always like four of them this year. So we, we, can always, we had that, so yeah. <laughs> you can always do a snow emergency where it has to be off there anyway. But um, I think what it was originally set up for was in case there was a fire at night. So. Fire trucks can get closer to buildings and stuff like that. I think that's what it was originally set up for. Yeah, maybe we ought to have fire department input then. I think they're here. Brandon. Danny. Are cars going to get washed? <laughs> what about parking in that alley? What alley? Next this alley houses? right here, right? Like by at, behind Addie's and in the history center that alley there we we've talked about doing work to that alley it's still on our art would that list. i mean if we tried to do to add parking i mean that would give us the ability to add more parking if needed as long as we're not going to open up the alley to traffic might as well have a parking place my my biggest thought that i worked on for a while but it didn't come through was the the empty lot next to the opera house would have been a yeah. great downtown parking area but my my attempts didn't come through so we'll keep it on the we'll keep it on the list how would alley parking work I don't, we, I don't, I mean, how much of the alley is city I don't think we available have none of it right there. I mean it's Most private it property private, right yeah. off the alley I know if I had a business down there I'd be parking in the alley to alleviate the spaces. And that's what we're trying to encourage. Yeah, Because but are that's some, their choice. There are, yeah, there are some businesses that park all day long down on the, the yeah. main street, but some of them don't have parking in the yeah. back. Well, I see Jody's car in front of the budget, so there, there, there's a spot being lost all day, but it's not like we're needing they, it during the middle of the day either, so, so what? Well, we can work out that TIF agreement. It'll be a non-issue. <laughs> yeah. There you go, exactly. <laughs> there's, there's an incentive for it. <laughs> but it is, you know, when you guys have your meetings with all your employees, you know, you take up a lot of spots. Yeah, real quick. It, there is no doubt. Uh, and we don't hold near as many of those meetings there as we used to. Uh, most of that stuff's been moved to web-based and stuff. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost impossible for when we hold a meeting to get it right downtown, so. And then we were gonna, I was gonna put into a request for taking the no parking out of West South Street. So sure, no parking now, go down the hill. Um, I think what you're gonna run into is in the next three or four years, just to get it done, is you're finding at the track and in football field, you're gonna be all over the place. Big one side no parking. Same way like over on Jefferson or uh goes it up Truman Street, pick one side or the other and just that way it'd be easier for them for snow bottom. He's talking about the block that's in front of um Burl O'Connor's house. Um yeah. the south side is no parking, but then part of the north side isn't. So you want to eliminate parking on the north side altogether? Yeah. So they've got new track and field. That's, that's kind of, uh, it's going to create more spaces. And once we get the whole list so you, looked you, at, we can. Do you want to, they can park on the north side or they can't park on the north side? They can't, no. You can park like down to Rodman's. 
Yeah. yeah. So you're saying let them park all the way on? Yep. On just one side, though, you're saying, right? Either the south or the north, we pick a side and they can park all the way down on one side. I'd say the north because all the, yeah. the, all the houses are on the north. Yeah. No parking. But it would just be on one side. Yeah, but isn't that the fire hydrant side, Ricky? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think what's going to happen is it's going to be all the residents parking there. It's not going to, there's still not going to be any positions open for school parking. <laughs> We'll keep working on that list yeah. and bring yeah. it back to you. Sounds good. Yeah. Correspondence. I don't have any correspondence Mark. except for um, the league good. conference that's in uh, September. Uh, I know Stephanie and myself will be going, so if anybody else wants to go, please let me know as soon as possible because the rooms do fill up. What's that date? Um, do you have your cityscape in front of you? It's on that. It's on the back side. And, and the agenda with all the classes and workshops that you can take us on that also. Mm -hmm. Remember, we're getting an award that night, so the more Council happy list and faces we can get there, the better. Can you see the engineer report? Do you believe you're anything? I think Travis will do that. Okay. Public court report. Uh, uh, we got pretty much all the work done on Country Club Drive with fixing that culvert over there. Um, we're going to wait to asphalt that back when we do our other asphalt patching in town so we only pay for one mobilization, um, give it a better chance to settle. Um, on Regal Ridge now, we had a temporary fix that was put in a few years ago and the temporary fix did not work. We're actually losing the subsoil and the base on the road and we're trying to figure out why now. We've removed a couple panels and dug along the side of it to pinpoint it, start hammering it. We got a couple more panels to look at out there to hopefully get the problem fixed without complete reconstruction of the road. Um, Where's that at? Regal, it's on the back of the cemetery. Yeah. Um, other than that, we're moving forward with the the sewer projects they were out measuring manholes to get all those castings made and ready to get the ball rolling on that um, we do have we reduced our um, crack our chip ceiling streets by quite a bit this year because of the unforeseen projects we've had come up like country club drive and regal we're trying to move money around to make sure we can at least pay for some if not all of those projects um, with that, uh, the last thing I have is the pool. Um, I just like to remind people that we really do not want or can have glass wear in the pool. It's dangerous to the people in the pool and the people carrying it. How prominent is the signage on that subject? Uh, you made the sign. One sign, the one rule sign. So how prominent is just it? The, just the <laughs> Well, it's a big-ass <laughs> sign, but just as one I'm sorry, I could help it. No, that's funny. <laughs> just the one sign we put on the wall. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm, I was going to talk to you tonight about getting additional signage at the for the gates. Yeah, that's, um, that's my question. Is I can make you some yeah, better. Yeah, no, we do have a lot of older kids that are spending a lot of time in the pool. I mean, we don't want to prevent them from doing that, but when you're 12 to 15 years old and... I've actually seen a lot of even older, even yep. older. recently. And it's... I don't, I don't know how to patrol it without somebody being there 24 hours, but they're not in the pool to, to get wet. They're running around, they're chasing each other, and they're knocking over little kids, and, and they're unsupervised. So we just ask parents to please know where your kids are, especially when they're at the park. And the other, the other issue we're having at the pool is there is no limit on how many people can be in that. Um, if you want to stand shoulder to shoulder, you can. Um, one of the big reasons we put the showers on the outside is to have people use those so we're not getting that grease and oil loading into our sand filter um, when we have you know I counted when we just opened it we had 45 people touching the pool at one time and that was not including the people on the outside watching their kids um, what that happens is uh, grease and oils coming off the body and the sunscreens and body oils will start to clog the filter and if we can't see the bottom of the pool because it gets that milky white from the sunscreen 
we are going to have to start shutting the pool down. So we're going to have a lot of mad and upset people. So so do we have to, well, I guess we can't have maximum occupancy kind of thing because we don't man it. Yeah, and 10 people could go in there. You could sit there and coat yourself with sunscreen and there's so little water in that, yeah. that it's in the filter space and we've checked about adding other filters and everything. It's just not feasible. And it really happens six times a year. I just, I want to- Where you gotta shut it down to well, do this? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna have to start- Super clean? Clinic gray area because it's technically not a swimming pool so I had to get confirmation from the county that yeah if we can't see the bottom we need to shut it okay so if you guys start getting phone calls could we shut the pool when it was 90 degrees out that's that's why and that's if why. people would follow the Facebook pages of the park and rec or of the city they would always know what was going on because they update that stuff all the time and it's always on there for you to look at and see and you would be completely up to date and have knowledge of what was happening that's it did you fix a spot there in front of the pool on the Jackson Street where the rock's been washed out. And yeah, we added more rock to it now. That's our. Yeah, I understand we got to patch it, but I mean. Yep. No, we. It was on the. Uh, we didn't leave today until we got it done. So. Yeah. Anything else? Nope. That's it. All right. Police chief. Police chief's report. Thank you, sir. Um, there's really more calls for service. If you had 12 to the 97, we got. Um, it's been, it was a pretty busy one. You can see we arrested seven people, which is Maybe it was a big somebody. questions for Rick? I think they're doing great. Um, just to let you know, uh, June 13th is Rico's birthday. We were five years old. Everybody would like to give him a present or something. <laughs> The Dairy Queen gift card or something. Travis will feed you. Fire Chief's report. I just have a few things. Um, first off, thank you for the donation for the smoke protector, Stephanie. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if any of you follow the fire department Facebook page or anybody that shared it, but. Uh, 515 uh, North Washington um, sent us a nice little letter that they woke up at 1.30 in the morning to a smell of smoke in their house and the, uh, yeah. the smoke detector that we installed was going off. That's what woke them up. Uh, they went into the child's bedroom, um, removed the dresser, and found that the whole outlet was completely charred and the electrical plug was melted off. Uh, so it ended up the next day, found out that the wiring was uh, not the correct capacity for what they had looked into it. The only bad part about the story was they never called us. Um, but uh, being as it may, the smoke protection program probably saved that family's life. So, yeah. um, and you installed that one this year? Yeah. yeah. Holy moly. So, well, nice job. That was a, that was a kudos to my wow. department. I have a question. I, I I saw something the other day where it's now mandatory to have the carbon monoxide detectors. Is Sorry, that July one. yeah? Is that something that you guys are going to do? Are you going to go back to those that's, homes? Yeah, that's uh, that might be the next project to see if we can add that to it since it is not that's a law now or will be a law. Um, so we're going to explore that option at our next meeting to see what we're going to do there. Um, reference the current list. Um, actually, one person on the list had had passed away uh, that we had waiting to install. Another person is now over at the care center. Um, and then the last family we contacted, due to this recall on the kiddo alarms, um, Ace Hardware didn't have any, so they're on back order. But we're going to just 
get as many as we can with the money you have uh, to at least get that last house done, and then um, we'll have some on stock going forward. The state doesn't have any more right now. We did find that out officially. Um, they're hoping to get another grant, but we'll see how it goes. And we're also probably throw around the idea of adding it maybe as a budgetary item next year when the, during uh, budget talks. Brandon, if you get to the carbon monoxide thing, I don't know how much they are or how many you would need or whatever, but I would be willing to donate to that as well. Okay. So just call me. Appreciate that. Um, and then the last thing, uh, we're at uh, 110 calls for the year. Um, just doing the math, it's going to be 220 at least for the year. And our record is 161, which was last year. So it's uh, been very, very busy, um, very stressful lately, but uh, just with the, the business. I think this is the first day in June we haven't had a call. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> City Minister's report. I already talked about the league conference. Um, the everybody should have received their recycling container by now. Um, the garbage containers will be delivered toward the end of the month. You can use the recycling container now, but the garbage containers cannot be used until the first week in July. Just wanted to let everybody know that. Again, it's we've put an ad in the paper twice now. Hopefully everybody's aware of that. And we also sent out the bulk mailing. So um, the library and, and the city went to a lot of work to put up the book walk. Um, and within one week's time, it was vandalized twice. I just can't believe how ridiculous this is that we can't even enjoy a book walk out on the sidewalks without somebody vandalizing it. We bought um, different frames this year. They were more expensive. And um, not only did the first time somebody knocked all the pages out of the frames, we got those all put back in. Now two of the frames are missing and probably three or four of the book pages. So Amy's going to have to go um, redo the book pages. And um, we don't have time to order two nor new frames. So we're short two pages. So we're going to have to take from the end or something. So it's just, if anybody knows anybody who's been doing this, if they'll just give the city hall a call, it's just ridiculous that within one week's time it was vandalized twice. Um, one thing that we've been looking at also is that um, a lot of our um, bars in this area have applied for outdoor liquor um, licenses. And um, we do not have an ordinance that states um, what those have to look like or what requirements they have to be. If they have to be fenced, if they can be just a cement slab. So I contacted the um, Iowa Alcoholic Board because I've been getting a lot of calls about this. And they said that it's up to the city. The city should have their own ordinance and what they require. So I looked through Iowa Code and contacted an attorney from the Iowa League and the Iowa Code does not specify it either. So it's pretty much up to us. So I'm just asking if that's something you want me to look into, um, see what other cities do, or if we just want to leave it the way it is. And I, the only reason is I've been getting some complaints because um, uh, one, one of the establishments is close to the park. So when they have an outdoor, um, we haven't had any um, complaints or anything that's been done wrong, people have just been concerned. So I was trying to find the, r the rules and regulations to help Doug do does what he, he a, needed to do. Does he have an offense that defines his beer garden, if that's what it's called? I or? don't know if he does yet. I think he just has a cement slab, but he does want to put in a volleyball court out there also. Um, so like I said, I, I was just trying to find rules and regulations for him to see what he was going to be required to do and I just it's just we don't have anything I think there should be fencing I think it should be enclosed so that would be something that I could check solve with a lot of problems of people taking open containers yeah. into the park and all different kinds of things like that so and I, I also should I also called Lynn County art that does our building in inspections and they said that um, they, would, they would only enforce whatever ordinance we had in place sure. so I check with other cities see what they've done yeah, absolutely I we'll think almost every simple. one of them that has it will have a fence yeah I agree okay I know Mechanicsville does. we um, are looking for builders and buyers um, so we can begin the LMI project we have one lot already I'm working on the second one so um, if anybody out there um, knows of anybody that's looking to build or would like to build um, on one of those lots there is an application they can pick up here at the City Hall and I've also sent out the builders application to all the builders that I could think of. If there's any builders that I missed, feel free to let me know and I'll send you out a packet. 
Bulky item day is June 23rd um, from 7 to 11 a.m. So I wanted to remind everybody we have um, been working on nuisances again. Most of the nuisances on the first round that we sent out were due um, yesterday um, to be completed, but we're kind of given a little bit of a leeway, so hopefully they can take advantage of bulky item day. But um, if you're one of those that received a letter, please get it taken care of and we'll be sending out more. Hopefully there's not too many more, but there are other ones that we're gonna have to take a look at. And I've also, um, the rental inspection ordinance that was passed back in 2011, I've been working and working and working on that one and I just couldn't get um, Lynn County Building and Lynn County Public Health to come to an agreement, but I finally have talked Lynn County Public Health into doing those inspections for us. Um, what I did is, uh, I think I left a copy at the last meeting, uh, hopefully they're still there. But I sent out a letter to all the landlords with a registration and I told them that if they receive, if they return that registration form to me, registering their rental property by July 15th, they would not have to pay the $50 registration fee. So they're starting to come in, people are um, complying with that. Also in the packet was a list or a, a tri-folded little brochure that lists what Lynn County will be looking for when they come out to do the inspection. And um, it even has some pictures in it showing what, you know, what is right and what is wrong. So what they will do is they will have um, all this time to get their checklist taken care of. And then in sometime in October, toward the middle of October, Lynn County Public Health will start doing those inspections. So they haven't given me the fees yet of what they're gonna charge because the prices that I had in, on my file were from 2011, so I'm sure they've changed since then. But we're gonna try to keep them as reasonable as we can because the city's not in this to make money. We want to make sure that the properties are safe and the people are living in them are safe. So um, all the properties will not be done this October. Um, we're gonna phase it out into three years so everybody will have their property inspected every three years. It won't be an every year thing. So if you guys receive any comments or questions, that's because those were mailed out last week. That's all I have. All right. Mayor's report, she don't have anything. Uh, council reports, Travis? Um, I don't have anything tonight. Nate? I also don't have anything other than just to say, Stephanie, thank you for the donation to the fire department. That's amazing. Oh, you're welcome. Very cool. Thanks. Stephanie? Um, I had two things. One was, Rick, there is a contractor in town that was doing some hail repair, and he would like to do something with some bike giveaways or something so that you guys could do an education. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I Okay, I was just going to check and make sure. And then, you know, over the weekend, um, our fire department and our police department both responded to an accident that was a fatality. And... I just want to thank them because I think that that's a hard thing for them to do regularly and I know it affects them. So that's it. John? Uh, <clears throat> RC Rail is looking for volunteers to man the table at Lynn County Fair and if anybody's interested in that they'll train you and of course the RC Rail their mandate is to keep kids off of alcohol, tobacco and, and uh, drugs. Um, History Center, there is a good program coming up at 7 o'clock on the 27th of this month. Uh, Southeast Lynn does have a program for kids on Wednesday. They have a movie. Uh, it's after lunch. You can check with them on the Times. And they have a kids program on Thursdays after lunch. Uh, that will be until school starts, I believe. Remember, no fireworks in town unless you have a permit. Um, there is going to be a safety fair uh, at Sauerkraut Days on Thursday. And if anybody wants to participate in that or donate to it, uh, Southeast Lynn and Rotary and RC Rail and some national organization is involved. Is, uh, and they're going to be hopefully if they can raise some money giving away things like helmets, uh, bike helmets and things like that for kids. That's all I have. All right. I don't have anything. So, we adjourned. <laughs>